Hi everyone, Kim here at Owl City Homestead and in today's video I'm going to share with you making rhubarb jam. I was so excited to be able to do this. As some of you know who've been following me a while, I have been struggling to find a place where rhubarb will grow well here in this hot, dry, Zone 9B Northern California climate and I have kept my rhubarb the last couple of years in large pots moving them around and finally this summer I found a spot they like and so it was great I had rhubarb in the late spring and throughout oh you know into June probably and then it just got too hot now here's a picture of what the rhubarb looked like early on in May June of this year they looked really good and they gave me some great harvest too By July though, you know, it was just too hot, even in the shade. The plants still, you know, did okay. They didn't die or anything, but they stopped producing except in a very minor way. Then the other day I was out taking care of my chickens, checking for eggs in their nesting boxes, and I looked down and lo and behold, I found more rhubarb. It had decided to grow again once the weather cooled down a few weeks ago. So of course I had to make use of it. And here's what I did. And look what I've got here, rhubarb. I've only got a little, some of it's small, but you know, it is the end of November now, so I'm not complaining. <laughs> this is a great second harvest after the heat of summer let up, and I'm going to make a little bit of jam and some simple syrup. So those few stalks of late harvested rhubarb are able to give me a simple syrup which I've just made here and that can be used on top of ice cream or what I'm gonna do with it is put it over cheesecake or you could use it on pancakes or to make a cocktail lots of different things you can use with a simple syrup right now it's got the rhubarb in it but I'm going to uh, strain the rhubarb off and just keep the syrup and then I'm gonna add this um, rhubarb to the other pot I've got going here let's take a look so this pot has two cups of rhubarb and one cup of a mixture of raspberries and blackberries that I froze last summer. And I'm going to add the rhubarb that I made the syrup from. So it's all cooked and mushy now. It was originally two cups of rhubarb, but now it's cooked down to being probably just one cup. So that's going to make a total of three cups of rhubarb with the one cup of berries. Um, I also added a cup of sugar to this and a little lemon juice, I think uh, two tablespoons. And I'm making jam and it is going to be delicious. Now I'm just going to be straining this syrup from the fruit through this sieve. You can see there's holes there and I'm just going to be pressing the fruit up against the holes and getting the syrup down in there. We'll see how this goes. Well, the jam has reached the magic point of being ready to put in the jars and give a little 10 minute water bath too. It looks wonderful. Now you might see little pieces of rhubarb. They're very, very soft. If you didn't want to have any sign of the rhubarb left, although I can't imagine why you would care about that, but if you didn't, you could mash them and boil them into a, a thick syrup before you put them in to make the jam with the sugar. But I think it's better this way. So I decided what I'm gonna do with this rhubarb syrup. I'm going to make some rhubarb lemon cocktails mixed with vodka. So that noise you hear in the background is the water bath going on and I managed to get two full pint jars of jam but I had this little bit extra. Now you don't have to give the jam jars a water bath if you're going to be using them up in the next one to two weeks. Um, definitely I'm probably going to use this up in the next uh, 20 minutes. <laughs> but. Uh, if you want them to last up to a year, give them a good 10 minute water bath if they're quart jars. If they're small jars, five to eight minute water bath is sufficient and it's super easy. I'm not into pressurized canning, that just scares me a bit, but water bath canning, not much easier than that. You know, I should make some sourdough toast and put this on it, but you know what I'm gonna do with this spoonful? I'm gonna eat it right now. Oh my goodness. All right, that rhubarb berry jam probably has to be the best jam I've ever had. 
I don't say that lightly because I do love jam. I love me a tangy apricot jam. I love that Rosella lemon jam I made recently, but this is super good. I'm really looking forward to next spring. I'm going to grow a lot more rhubarb now that I know what microclimate I need to use here in this hot, dry area, and that would be huh, shade. Lots and lots of shade. And with all that rhubarb, I'm going to make a lot of things, and one of those things is going to be straight rhubarb jam because I think that it's gonna be lovely too. Now I mentioned in the video I was gonna make some rhubarb lemon cocktails at Thanksgiving and I did. I didn't share it with you because I had family over and we were too busy drinking it for me to think about sharing it. But they were really good. That rhubarb simple syrup worked super well with uh, vodka and champagne and lemon juice. I think I would have liked a stronger rhubarb flavor so next time I think I'm going to uh, make this syrup a little stronger or use a little more syrup in it, something like that. But the concept was really good. I just want to taste more rhubarb in it. The rhubarb jam that is amazing. This was majority rhubarb with some added berries, blackberries and blueberries that I froze last summer. And oh my gosh, so, so good. Like, as I said in the video, the best gem I've ever had. And I made several jars of it. And now I know that next year, oh, I'm growing a lot of rhubarb over there and I'm gonna be making a lot of jam. I think that would be great on top of cheesecake, uh, as a waffle syrup. Lots of things, but especially jam. Now, once I made that jam, I was like in the mood, I guess, or was in my mind anyway, because I went to make a peach pie and I took some peaches that I had frozen a few months ago from my orchard. And when I took them out, I'm like, oh, these are kind of uh, mushy. You know, freezing makes them kind of mushy. And I'm like, I had never frozen them before for pie. I'd always done peach pie with fresh peaches. I'm like, I don't really think this will make that appetizing of a pie. I know, I'll make jam. And so I did. Um, I had these peaches thawed and I grabbed a bag of apricots from my apricot tree that those were frozen too. And I mixed them together. So this is three parts peaches, one part apricot jam. And oh my goodness, it is so good. I can't say it's the best because I keep saying that about every jam I've been making lately. <laughs> but I'm telling you, if you like tangy jams, this is like a really good balance between the tang of apricot and the scrumptious, delicious sweetness of peach. So this worked really well too. Now, while I was doing that, I'm like, what am I gonna do with all my apples? And I remembered something that my brother used to eat when I was growing up. I never liked it and my other brothers didn't like it, but this one brother loved it. So my mom always got it for him. It was apple butter. So I went ahead and made some apple butter. I didn't really do any work. I was in the kitchen anyway, making peach jam and uh, rhubarb jam and stuffing and stuff like that. So I went ahead and threw a bunch of apples from my trees along with a few other simple ingredients into the crock pot and it just cooked for like 10 hours, 10 or 12 hours and I had apple butter. So yeah, a little water bath canning and wow, that's great. Plus I tasted it and I like it now as an adult, crazy taste change. Maybe it's because it's my own apples and I made it myself. Not sure. Well, if you can't tell, I have been having a lot of fun in my kitchen lately, preserving these fruits that have come off my own trees, my own vines. And if you watch my last video, uh, the green tomatoes, finding all kinds of interesting things to do with them. And uh, just discovering that I have this whole new avenue with water bath canning to preserve stuff. And I know I'm late to the the ride or late to the game or whatever it is they say that a lot of other people have already been doing this but I'd kind of always lumped it in with pressurized canning. I have done water bath canning before but only a few times sort of warily <laughs> but having taken the time now to research it properly and having spent a lot of time making a variety of things and using the water bath canning process I'm now super confident and comfortable with it and I find it just so convenient and it really just expands my horizons in the kitchen and you know there's just everything's good about that. So I encourage you to use the produce you're getting from your gardens and your orchards in this way too. And if you're in a place where you can't grow that much yet, then get out to the farmer's markets and get some produce from them and go to town having fun preserving those. They'll still be homemade and they'll still be delicious. So thanks for joining me today, everyone. I hope you learned something or at least enjoyed yourself a bit. I know I'm always learning new things all the time. It seems especially so lately. 
Well, I enjoyed your company and I appreciate you watching this video. I'd love it if you could give it a thumbs up and share it with others. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, that would be very welcome. I'd appreciate it if you would do so, if you like this kind of content. So have a great week, everyone, and I will see you again next time. And remember, you can create the life you want. So why not start right now?